Hello and welcome to the Surplus Geek Podcast. I'm Jake and I am joined once again by Bailey. Hey, thanks for having me on again. Of course, he'll be on a few more, so don't be surprised if you see him in the future. Today we'll be talking about preserving history and what that means to us and hopefully means to you. I'll let Bailey take over for a bit. So for preserving history, we'll be talking about multiple topics such as sealed mask, proper storage, general maintenance, environment, and better ways to display mask and gear along with what to use and what not to use when displaying gear as a mask. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So we're going to talk about all of that. Um, to start it off, like, what do we mean by preserving history? You know, what, what are we talking about here? So for me, with preserving history, since I was an intern, a curatorial intern at Battleship Cove, for me, it's just pretty much like... Uh, proper storage and display of antiques, relics, and surplus itself. And um, basically, to, to, your goal here is to preserve the piece and to slow down the, the, the nonstop momentum of time that's going to degrade whatever the piece is. Because everything that we own will eventually be dust, unfortunately, including ourselves. So I know that's a little bleak, but it's the truth. So we're what we do by owning this stuff is we're trying to slow down that process. So there's a lot of things you have to do to mitigate the destruction of said piece. So like for instance, if you were you volunteer at the American Heritage Museum, yes, I do. They have all their collection for the most part inside. Actually, almost everything's inside, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, there's maybe one or two things just sitting outside, but like. You do that because you don't want to leave stuff and you want to have it in a climate controlled facility without the sun beating down on all the time. It's kept kind of dim in there for, for, ma- for, for preserving purposes. You know, that's one thing you can do. And we'll get into that in a little bit about environment and how much of a factor that really does play. Um, but preserving history, that's what it is. It, it's, you, you have these items. If you want them to last. And for me, like eventually I'm going to pass this stuff on. I'm going to eventually pass this stuff on to someone, either my family or an, another collector who, who knows, in the future. Hopefully a while from now. But, Hopefully. Yeah, that's the plan. We'll see. But that's that's basically the what of and is this what we're talking about, you know. So uh, with that being said, to break it down into pieces of history and, and like what, what you're, what you're going to find in the market is you're going to find stuff that's going to be new old stock, which is basically... Like it would be on the shelf or or how it would have been, you know, it's sealed in a bag, cardboard, tin can, um, what you may be. It might be new old stock, but open, might be loose. Not everything's come sealed. Um, so that's, you'll find that versus your unsealed used condition stuff. And obviously that ranges from basically brand new, just whiteware, maybe not anywhere. It's just not anywhere near the original packaging to absolutely destroyed and falling apart and there is a purpose to either restoring or buying things that are destroyed and we'll get to that a little bit as well so with sealed items i guess the big question is why would you want to buy a sealed item if you can't do anything with it well for me it's for a uh, a display purpose and a preservation purpose as well such as um i do have open examples that I did not open, but I have purchased throughout the time. And I like having a open example right in front or right, yeah, right in front of the, uh, the close example to, to show like, this is what would be inside. Yes. Let's just say the cardboard, the plastic bag or the tin itself. But there also comes a time when you either should or should not open a, a sealed, you know, a box or tin. It doesn't matter which, But there comes a time where you might have to come down to that decision and actually make your own decision, whether or not it is a good decision or not. Yeah. When it comes to opening things, there's a time and place for all of that. Um, Some things you're going to, you just, you should not open. Well, I shouldn't say should. You are recommended not to open. And other things, have at it. Um, It's, it really comes down to the type of item, how uncommon it is in the market, uh, I mean, again, if it's a one-of-a-kind thing that's sealed, you probably shouldn't open it. But then again, if it's never been seen since it was like, say, photograph for a prototyping, I don't know how this would even happen, but hypothetically, you might want to open it for historical reasons to photograph it and stuff. I don't know. That's a hard one. But with, with 
a lot of things when they're sealed, newer stuff is different. If you're buying things that are made in like the 2000s or made in 2010. Just recently, pretty much. Uh, you can open away. I mean, if you buy, if you can get it cheap and get one that's unopened or two that are open, or unopened, I mean, you can just open one, keep the other one sealed. No biggie. Um, you know, if it's current issue gear, you're going to find a ton of it. But Definitely. Um, if it's something weird, it's current issue or, or close to current issue, but it's weird. Like, for instance, my K3 from Korea. I don't know whether or not to open it because it's sealed, original, not been touched since probably the factory. But then again, it's like, it's kind of rare. because Still modern. It's modern, but like, they're not common on the US market. So yeah. it's one of those weird items where I'm not sure what I want to do with it. But there's stuff like tin cans. Now, I will say this with regards to M9s and tin cans. Uh, you generally should not open them because there is perfectly presentable examples of M9s and M9A1s that are open. They're very common mask. You can find them in perfect condition. Um, I have uh, an M9A1 left-handed sitting right behind me, and it's basically brand new. And so there's not really... And it, like Again, you could do what you want with, with your own stuff, but generally speaking, I would say that um, you should keep the stuff sealed you shouldn't open it. M9s, there may have made a certain number of them, but they're not going to last f- forever. Like, eventually, they're going to be rare. I mean, it's like Mohs and Agats on the gun market. They used to be a $100 rifle, even less. They used to be like $78, yep. something like that. And now they're they're starting to get up there. Like $400, $500 even. Yeah, and they're, they're getting to the point where they're not as common. Now, they're still pretty common. They shouldn't be priced what they're priced at. That's just the, that's the market doing the market thing. But that's something to keep in mind that it's not just about you know, there's, there's definitely preserving history to value. And a sealed mask definitely comes with a lot more value. Definitely. Yeah, I agree. So, so you got to weigh those two options. Because if you ever sell it, and, uh, you know, I'm not saying you buy stuff to sell. I mean, some people do. But that's something to keep in mind. You know, if you're a seller or something, don't open it if you need to take photos. We'll pay more if you keep it sealed. Like, I know I would. <laughs> like, that's not even, like, a secret. Like, we'll pay more if you keep it sealed. We don't need to see what's inside. We know what's inside. Definitely, yeah. We will buy it. Yep. So, um, I guess, yeah. So, one to open it, I guess it really comes down to, for instance, if you buy something, it's sealed, and it's, and it's a bag, and it's ripped. Yep. Open it up. Yep. It's already exposed to air. It's a tin can, and it's got a dent in it, and the dent is cracked through the tin. You can open it. It's already exposed to air. It's not going to... You're already... It's already open to the elements. It's not going to make a difference. Um, although it's still probably better preserved in the tin, but long term it's not going to matter. Um, because now it's been open, so it doesn't really, you know, if it changes the, uh, let's just say the life expectancy of yeah, exactly, the stat, like the uh, stuff inside, such as the mask and the carrier and whatnot. So yeah, you you definitely, you know, don't need to open something. I wouldn't if if you can't find I, the likelihood you're not going to be able to find an unopened. Ver- I, likelihood you're gonna f- you're not gonna be able to find an open version of a mask is very low. So you should be able to get both. Like I said, I have that that I have a couple M9s that are like look literally like they came out of an open tin, and then I have a couple. Well, I have more than a couple tins, <laughs> so I have quite a few tins. But you know, same thing with any mask. Um, the tin cans is just the easiest one because they're so common, you know, on the market at the moment. But they won't always be that common. Eventually, they no. will dry up. I mean, it yeah. could take 20, 30 years, but it will happen. There's going to be things. There's definitely a time, though, when you should open things. When it's just a weird piece. It's just a weird comment. It's just like a, I don't know, like it's just a weird topic to describe because yeah. you're always going to have the, the disagreements and the agreements of certain topics. Why not, like you're saying, like you should open it if it's ripped? I mean, guess I won't be like, well, what's the point in doing that? Like, yeah, it's already good enough as it is inside. So why would you open it? Exactly, you're gonna have disagreements and agreements of certain things. So nobody is right or wrong if you think about it. Honestly, the only like the only wrong in this is if you're doing it for the wrong malicious reasons. intent. Yeah, now, if you do it like which we've had plenty of examples in the community itself that have done that out of spite and yeah, it's not the way to go. It's not the way to go because you'll be shunned upon, and not only that, you're just not gonna be just dis- you know liked the most because you're pretty much like ruining history itself that's the way i see it yes exactly you're not doing anyone's favors by doing you're also not doing yourself favor by ruining a piece of history like like for example like 
you don't like me because I say certain things, but then it's like you open a sealed master's or proof of points. Like, you know, there's really no, like, what do you have to prove? Like, come on. Yeah. I mean, you're just, I guess it's happened, this it's happened to me twice at this, at this rate. And it's just like, oh, it's going to happen again. Now. It's going to happen again, probably, but I don't care. Egging because... them on. <laughs> Anyways, moving on from encouraging violence. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's all right. Get a little carried away. He's very passionate about this topic. I do. I am the case. As a historian, um, Lottie Duh, well, college I degree. I would like to add on that I have had to open a a tin because of, again, a crack. Was a crack. Actually, it was a crack plus rust. And a big dent on the side. Yeah. Which further implemented, you know. Once you have rust, especially with the tins, once you have rust involved, okay, now you're, start, you're talking about a good reason to open it. Probably not, water damage. You're talking potential water damage. You're ta- you're, so the mask now has, now you're not just talking about normal air getting to the mask and, and the loss of, you know, it being hermetically yep. sealed. Now you're getting into a lot more factors. And those are things that can actually degrade it. And having it out of, you know, if you find something water damaged, but the whole thing's not water damaged, you can salvage most of it. So this is like anything else. Like if your sink explodes and destroys your underneath your sink, you can still fix. You are not you don't have to throw out the whole house, you know? Yeah. You might just have to throw out the particle board underneath it. But that's what we're kind of getting at. So like you, you got to, I, I hate to use the word common sense because it's it's so... Not common sense. Well, it kind of is at a point, but then again, it really is. Well, it's hard because it's yeah. like it's hard to determine what and what that's not. Yeah, that's true. And again, this is where it comes into have friends, have people you can talk to, and see, get their opinions. You know, ask around. If you have an Instagram, you run a big, you have an Instagram following. Ask your followers. You might get some 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 hate, but honestly, it's the internet. You're gonna get hate no matter what you do. So, I mean. You got to take the good and the bad and just move on. Some criticism is better than no criticism. Exactly, and the key to this is being. When it comes to preserving history, you got to be open-minded. Be open-minded to being told that you're doing something the wrong way. Even if you think you're right and you have science to back you up or you have documentation. Facts and knowledge. Facts and knowledge. Um, be open-minded. You know, Take their consideration of their opinion and, and see if they do have... And, and you might adjust fire from there and see what you need to do. So that's something to definitely keep in mind when dealing with all of this. You know, because... <sighs> When you're, when you're collecting these things, it's not just about having cool swag. <laughs> well, it's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, some, sometimes it is. You know, you get a piece, you're like, oh, yeah. I tell them to flex, you know. Yeah, like, XM, cool, yeah. XM50, for instance. Mine. That's one of those things. Mine, too. Oh, uh, mine's better. Yeah, well, you know, it will be mine soon. Let's see about that. Remember, send them comments. Tell them to sell it to me. Anyways. Don't do it. So... The, but the thing is, I, I honestly, I wanted that piece for collection purposes. There's a historical value to that. And in 20, 30 years, that's going to be very valuable. Oh, very indeed. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, and it's not just the value. It's not that it, I'm going to sell it to make money. It's, it's the value is, is in the concept of it and the rarity of it or the uncommon of it, that the importance it is. The, the bigger picture here is that history, it's not just about the piece singularity, like single piece. It's, yep. it's, you're talking about for, for specifically for, anything if you have an early versus a late if there's patterns to it you know say you're talking about og 107's first pattern second, second pattern, pattern third, third pattern, pattern or jungle fatigues or oh, 50 sec, 56 gear first and second yeah, pattern first and, first and second or alice lc1 lc2 yep. um when you're talking about that gear you know you're going from you, you can see the tra- you can see the transition of gear you know um like that's why i'm collecting web gear and i'm going all the way back because i want to see the transition from the beginning to to, to current era or at least almost clear and error. Um, and it's interesting to see how we've developed and changed things and learned. And and that, that there's there's something fun about that in discovery phase. You might realize, oh, wow, now that makes sense to why they do it this way versus that way. Yep. Because when they were doing this, they learned, oh, that doesn't work or something like that. And that, you know, preserving history goes into learning history and it, they kind of are together at the same point where they're, they're kind of mixing. And we want, you know, you can't, continue to learn about history if your history is degrading in front of your eyes. And I think that's, that's an incredibly important, I I think that's incredibly important to take in consideration. And I think it's something that a lot of people forget when they're collecting that there's something more. And even if it's an item that like they made millions of like LC one gear, Alice gear in general is like a dime a dozen. Yeah. It's everywhere. It's so common. It's, they made millions and probably millions and millions of units of some of the gear, some of the, the, you know, like the ammo pouches and stuff. I mean, holy moly. 
It's a lot. So, and I get like, you know, you could probably get away with destroying a little bit of that, not advocating for destruction of history or pieces <laughs> of surplus, but you could probably get away with a little bit of that, not be that big of a deal. Yeah. The further you go back, though, the further you're getting into territory of, of just not being common. Like, for instance, like around 100 years or so, it's like the yeah. pushing point of it. Well, like, when you get back to like World War One uniforms. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you, you're getting into- But then into, again, some of those uniforms are made out of wool and cloth. Oh, yeah. That it's like- it's hard to preserve most of it because you got to do like cedar, uh, cedar coat hangers, mothballs. Yep. It, there's so much preservation that goes into World War One gear, especially the mask itself, because they were made out of rubberized cloth or canvas, whatever it was. Yeah. And I. Or leather. Leather, yes. Yep. Which and, is also a whole other bag of, you know, yeah, pack for preserving. Yep. yep. And I myself am lucky enough to actually own a very like pliable piece of what we're one equipment that it's like it's uncommon or you know it's yeah. rare to hear of they usually and, become tacos yeah pretty much like a, <laughs> like a think of like a you know talk about chalupa like all crunchy and stuff like that exactly. just think of it like that pretty yeah. much that's a like world war one mask i'm talking or about. even my french mask from the 1980s yeah his is worse trust yeah, me it's it's cracking i'm trying to keep it together but that thing is falling apart <laughs> but yeah so and and you know we'll get into storage in a little bit here but the, that that's you know plays into it and stuff is, um, but yeah. So moving on from that, we'll we'll start talking about general maintenance and tips and stuff and, and ideas behind that. So obviously, obviously, I'm not an expert in all this stuff. I can definitely tell you that. Um, I don't know about Bailey, but I definitely don't know everything there is to know about leather. Everything there is to know about wool. Everything there is to know about all of this because I generally have not gotten past, past. I haven't got back to the era of that type of things i'm still kind of stuck in korea vietnam to present um and most of that you know post vietnam everything's nylon it's kind of hard to not take care of nylon you just don't leave it in the mud and you're good yeah you know um but uh any tips for the world war one stuff you well, already you already said a few i noticed yeah for the world war one stuff like let's just say the mask and stuff like that that were made, mostly made out of uh cloth and rubber and canvas um, I would suggest handling each mask with proper care and safety along with actually wearing, um, cloth gloves. Yeah. Like a cotton pair of gloves. Yeah. So. Cause you don't yeah. want your, your skin oils, your skin oils and grease, like, you know, um, ruining the mask itself and like potentially harming it and actually degrading the condition of it. But for leather, I would suggest the same because of the uh, the kind of oils they used yep. during the First World War. They dipped into some kind of, uh, I think it was, uh, I forget what kind of sealant it was, but apparently if you get it on your hands, it's just very sticky and just like, it just sticks onto you and it's not good for your hands and the, or touching other stuff as well. Yeah, skin oils is something that you need to watch out for. I think people underestimate how much, uh, I know in the in the gun collecting community, that like it's huge for older guns. You will find fingerprints. Oh yeah, like they're basically in the gun now. Because, Smudge and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's something that you have to really keep an eye out and stuff. So uh, I generally newer items you're probably fine, but yeah, when you start getting back to the older I items, yeah, you definitely want to start wearing some sort of cotton gloves or you know. And also on that note, make sure you wear something that is not going to uh, react with the thing that you're holding. Oh, definitely. I agree with that. If you're wearing something that's, I can't think of anything at the top of my head, but like something that long-term interactions would cause problems. Probably sunlight. Well, yeah, sunlight, yeah. But I was thinking more like you're wearing like rubber or pla some sort of like uh, synthetic glove interacting with like a natural rubber. See, I don't know because I haven't heard anything about anything like that at all. I don't know. I just haven't seen anything about it. I'm just spitballing, keeping the idea fresh in people's minds, you know, yeah. just in case. Just in case it comes down to that row, someone, it actually it does happen to someone and, you know, they were <clears throat> Well, also, like, make sure you're using a clean set of whatever you're using. Yeah. You need a pair of gloves that you use to uh, do your car parts. <laughs> yeah. You know, like. You need a new pair of gloves. You can't, or like, you can't keep reusing them. Or, like, them. we used a pair of chemical gloves to clean our, uh, to, we had the uh, industrial cleaner for our rifles and yeah. machine guns and stuff. We would use that. Um We'd have chemical gloves, and eventually they had a hole in them, and you just fill your gloves up. So that was fun. That's not good. Um, I love that. I love doing that though. Way quicker to clean. We had a. That was that was a good thing. That was one of my favorite things when we got that. But it saved us hours, like literal hours of work. Anyone that know, anyone's been in is gonna be like, yep. Mm -hmm. But anyways, <laughs> uh, don't worry. Final final formation is gonna be soon. Never happens. Um. 
but yeah, I would say that like when you get, yeah, when you get back to that era, you definitely don't gotta go. Be, gotta be a lot more cautious of what you handle with, you know. And then none of this is really advice. This is all just general talking. So I would definitely look into it. Do your research, start Googling, find out what they're made out of, see if there's, you know, people, because people are already out there know they, they've they gone through, trialed, figured it out. This isn't just for mask only. I'm talking in general areas, yeah, such as everything. papers, postcards, especially up until World War II Korea because of the different paper they were using at the time. Yeah. And you don't want your um, oils on your hands, like smudging all across the, uh, the pen ink and stuff like that they were using at the time as well. So, you got to think of that as well. That's along a good point. With, with like I said, postcards, documents, um, uniforms, because most of the time, most of the uniforms, especially during early World War II, were made out of wool. Yep. Such as the HBTs, I'm pretty sure they were made out of wool. Um, for wool, you can do, like I said, cedar, coat hangers, and mothballs. Yes. That, and that's, that's a big, a big, uh, important step in actually preserving wool items and stuff like that yeah it's huge and i think bringing up documents that's huge too because we don't like that doesn't come up a lot well, but that's what we handle at battleship cove just a bunch of like paperwork and documents and stuff like that especially like uh menus um postcards letters everything like that yep uh battle orders maps everything yeah and and i think uh i had to wear gloves every time when you're collecting if you're learning about your collection you should have a stack of like i have that those two bins over there, those two things full of manuals and other, you know, uh, documents and stuff. That's good to have on hand and it's good to know. You want to, like, you want to take care of this stuff. You don't want to just throw it in a, in a bin and forget about it and it gets, you know, ripped and, and stuff like that. So, like, we're not just talking about masks or even, like, body armor or web gear and stuff. It goes straight down to documents, small things, small items. Definitely. Um, you definitely want to take care of that stuff. And you want to be careful, too, because, like you said, paper the type of paper used then versus now, what you sandwich the stuff between. If you're putting it with cardboard, you got to be careful with the cardboard you're putting yep. it with because uh, it's like acid. We want acid-free. Yeah, you want something like acid-free based. Yeah, So, because uh, otherwise you, it's going to eat right through whatever you put in there. Yep. That's, uh, any, any hobby, this goes with any hobby really because I know like comic book collections and stuff, you want to make sure you're, what you're preserving. You have like it. a plastic covering around it. And all yeah. That. You want to have like a frame or like a little. Yep acid-free base stand like right behind it like a board or whatever exactly and that that's something that so a lot of the stuff carries over from any other uh, hobby that involves collecting something you know uh so this actually really applies to everything i know we talk about specifically mostert -er because that's what we do but if you have a coin collection stamp collection comic book collection you collect action figures whatever you do uh you know that's something to keep in mind you know this stuff translates over to that too you oh know? It, it really does because for the document part, I have like magazines, um, postcards all over from Germany, World War One, World War Two. I have like advertisements and stuff like that. I even have a World War One propaganda poster that I spent a good amount of money on to have it framed and actually. Do you have a picture of it on Instagram? Um, I should actually post that soon. Thank you yeah, for you reminding should. me. It's actually a phenomenal piece. Hopefully, of my it's collection. posted by the time this this goes out. Trust me, it better be. It's six it weeks. It will be. Six weeks? Yeah, two every two weeks, dude. All right. Yeah. So. I can guarantee this. Yeah, I, can't, I just realized I forgot to say that at the end of the, for the first one we recorded. But yeah, anyone listen to this at this point, uh, it will be a every two or every other week, basically. So two weeks from the release. So yep. most likely Friday, but I'm not 100% sure. I have to. It will change. Edit. Back on topic, though. But yeah. So if you're, co and, and, uh, if you're collecting something else, you know, that is something to keep in mind. Um that these things translate over to that. Or if you if you do like, you know, you kind of like you collect surplus, you collect something else, you know, like you collect Legos, for instance. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I don't collect Legos, but I am a big Lego person. I love Legos. and I love Legos. <laughs> yeah, I got a Saturn, I got that Saturn V, the collector's edition, sitting over my computer. Um, if you just, you know, you got to take care of that stuff because like, it's a, it's all applies in the same across the board. You put value on the stuff you paid for, it, you need to take care of it, or you should. Um, and I think that's important and back to maintenance tips though. Um, so yeah, if you're dealing with like anything that should, like, if it's not supposed to get moist or, or anything, or it's not supposed to be, you know, you want to keep it in a, in a, you know, this just kind of goes into environment, mild temperature, damp or, uh, mild temperature, uh, low humidity. Yeah. Low humidity environment. Yeah. So if it, getting into like proper storage, uh, which kind of goes in environment, but we'll kind of dart over 
and keep coming back and forth. Uh, proper storage. Okay, so the proper storage gets really weird because there's so many ways you can properly store stuff. And it's always like again, there's always be disagreements and agreements of how yes. you should actually store stuff and whatnot. Exactly. And this is this is where it gets difficult is uh how to <laughs> properly store. <laughs> because some people will swear by one method, other people will say uh, the one thing I'll say with mask, you shouldn't store them in their carriers. Or styrofoam heads. Yeah, or styrofoam That's heads. That's a big no no on my part. Yes. Um and we've all made that mistake. Or at least most people make that mistake. I've definitely made that mistake. Uh, you should use uh, some sort of packing paper, acid-free. Acid-free based packing paper. Yep. Or plain cloth white t-shirts with no print on it. Yep. And uh, that will be, you know, if you want that, and that will go into displaying, which we'll also talk about in a little bit. But when you display, yeah, and if you're going to, you know, you don't buy containers, don't overstuff your containers. Um Make sure there's nothing on top of the stuff that you seem that seem valuable. Don't stuff it with like um, stuff that will pack it down, potentially damaging it. Yeah, whatnot. push down on it. Yeah, yeah. You want to like make sure stuffing pretty much. You don't want to like do stuff like that. You want, yeah, you're not packing to go on vacation. You're packing yeah. the store, so <laughs> you want to like you don't need to pack everything in the kitchen sink in there at once. You can you know if you have to buy more than one container, like you can be like me and have twenty six or seven containers in their in their office, taking up huge amounts of space. But it's to preserve. I have one long one for my tap tap gear, just to fit the coveralls in. And if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. Obviously, it depends on the size of your collection and how much space you have. Yep. But the big no nos I'd say for storing is is obviously jamming pack things, jamming things in, and just having things like having glass resting or or any sort of lens of any type resting against something that's going to scrape it. Uh, storing things in cardboard boxes is not good. Because cardboard boxes are both a magnet for bugs, and bugs will eat things. And also, they don't do anything for, like, if it gets wet, it just translates right into whatever's in the box. Uh, cardboard boxes are great for moving things, but they're not good for long-term storage. I'm kind of guilty of that. Yeah, I mean, everyone is. I have the those masks downstairs that yeah, I talked about in the last I have one. a tower of, like, literally surplus gear and masks. Yeah, but they're in your bedroom, though, right? My room, actually. Oh, okay. Which is close to my bedroom. Yeah. So I mean, as long as you're not putting it in like, your basement where it's going to be damp and cold, the temperature's going to change rapidly. Like spiders and stuff down there. Yeah. And like I said, bugs is big. I'm not going to get into it too much. I haven't had any issues so far, knock on wood, but <laughs> um, you, you definitely got to keep that in mind and stuff. And that's just a general thing like for storage and, and, and stuff as you get older. You just, you know, using some sort of plastic toe. And that's the other thing. If you're going to put it Anything into plastic, make sure what you're putting into the plastic does not react with the plastic. Oh, yeah, that's the big issue. Yeah, so you don't want to put something that's going to be up against it that is going to eventually melt. Yep. Because that will happen. That goes with plastic bags. If it doesn't fit in a plastic bag or it's pressed up against the plastic, just generally stay away from plastic bags just because they're going to squish whatever item. Same reason for carriers, for gas masks. You don't want to put them in the carriers because it sounds like that's what you'd want to do, but it's just going to, it's going to, tacofy your your gas mask it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna squeeze it together it's it's you know if it's probably gonna permit it into a position that you don't want it to yeah especially it to. like nose cups yeah that happens a lot with yep. nose cups i mean you look at the the m40 nose cups the mcu nose cups they have that weird dis- deforming effect so that's something you definitely have to watch out for in terms of you know uh storage beyond that you really just that's pretty much it you just gotta keep space make space really store things not on top of each other, you know? I mean, I, again, I have, I probably make, I probably do some of these sins, but, you know, I'm trying not to. Um, the big thing too is certain items you definitely don't want to leave up forever. If you have a display, like a mannequin, you don't want to leave it up forever. I'm thinking like, you know, older items that are going to start to harden and, and yeah. you know, anything that's leather, leather will harden. You need to, you know, again, back to maintenance, you got to maintain your leather because it will harden over time, start to crack. You don't want that. Um, and that's something that, that's completely preventable. It just takes time and effort. Um, and that's something too, going into preserving history is whether or not, is this item worth my time to take care of? If you don't think you can take care of it, don't buy it. It's fine. There's, there's a lot of items I passed up on over time because I just, at the moment, don't have the space or time to preserve and make sure that they're going to maintain, be maintained. And I think that's key. You know, you, you either can buy 
a newer car that doesn't need as much maintenance. Well, I guess if you buy a Toyota, Toyota it's going to run forever. <laughs> but you buy an older car that might need, you know, a lot more tune up and maintenance and stuff. It's same concept. If you don't have the time to put into it, you know, let someone else get it and they can take care of it, you know? Yeah. You don't get it, you know, you don't have to win them all. So I think that's incredibly important when it comes to this is that if you don't think you can take care of it, it's fine. Just pass along and let someone else take care of it. And Hopefully someone else that you know will take better care of it for you. And that's the thing, yeah. Yeah, if you know someone that might want it, send them the link. Yeah. Try to get them to get it. Then, you know, it's close by. And then maybe when you do have time, maybe they'll sell it to you. That can happen too. Things transit. It's like a merry-go-round for collecting with, within friends. You switch gear all the time and yep. sell stuff. And sometimes it comes back around. So that's something to keep in mind. I think generally that goes over storage for the most part. I don't think I missed it. Pretty that. much. I like to add on to the storage factor that I would actually recommend silica gel bags. Yes. I'm oh, yeah. Those desiccant bags. bags. Yes. Yeah. So you add them to your uh, your compartments where you store if your stuff. If you're living in a part of the world where there's high humidity. You, get, you stuff those things in those bad boys. Yeah. yeah. You get them. <laughs> if you can't control, if you don't have a, if, especially even a place where you can't control your, your temperature, you can't control anything, you don't have climate control at all. Yeah, uh, desiccant bags of any kind uh, will definitely be something you should look into because that will help mitigate some of the issues. Uh, that's definitely key, actually. Uh, and then other like the general maintenance going along with maintenance for for storage, just displays, all that is dusting. Every once in a while, you should probably clean your stuff. Yeah, um, which I got to do more of. But every once in a while, you need to clean your stuff because that stuff over time can theoretically do damage. I guess depending on what it is. I don't think dust would really would. I mean, even tape. Tape on older mass. Probably, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just a thought. Let's give it a good dust now and then when you feel yeah. like it. When you have free time. Yeah, you have free time. Um, Nobody does these days, actually. Moving on to... We'll, we'll do displays next and then talk about general environment because we've already kind of touched it, but we'll see if we can mop that up. Uh, with displaying, we already made... We already talked about the big one, which is styrofoam heads for mass is a big no-no. Yep. Um, I can't imagine it's bad for helmets, um, but I would assume that you wouldn't like, especially older helmets with leather and stuff. You wouldn't want to have pressure on the leather at all. Times. No, especially with the uh, uh, first World War Brodies, the yeah. M nineteen seventeen, specifically the M nineteen seventeen Brodies, or even the uh, M nineteen seventeen A ones. Yeah, because you'd be putting pressure pressure and, on yeah. the leather liner and stuff like and that. And eventually, it's gonna crack. Yeah, or potentially just wear away have it give out and just when you take off the helmet for once it just fall out pretty much yeah exactly so that's definitely something to keep in mind uh, when you're displaying stuff is like maybe you want to rotate items in and out for display purposes yeah. um it like for me i i just have my mask leaned up against the wall usually cardboard in them if i can or not cardboard sorry uh acid-free paper and I try to rotate them and move them every once in a while just to, when I dust them so that way that like there's no um, surface that's just pushing up against anything. Yep. It's hard to keep up on. And sometimes I'll just put them flat or I'll put them in a neutral position the best I can so that way they're not, you know. Um, but that, that's definitely something to keep in consideration and stuff. When it comes to other gear, Alice or web gear in general, um, honestly, the nylon stuff, you're pretty much good. Just don't, if it's like wash it if it's gross mostly modern like i guess 80s and up is like okay yeah. they're not that hard to maintain it's just 70s and before it's just a lot I mean, more difficult the only issue with the modern gear anything that has what uh weatherproofing or some sort of waterproofing material added to it yeah don't be surprised when it smells bad oh trust me it, it's on it it's unavoid like puke. yeah it's unavoidable it happens it's like almost a familiar smell to me at this point um and it kind of is unfixable yeah, you really I can't wash it out because it's just going to come right back. Yeah. Um, so just bear that in mind. It's not really something you can like fix um, or avoid. I mean, you can kind of avoid it if it if you maintain it really well. But I feel like even then, it's going to eventually start smelling. Either way, I don't know. That's something I haven't like tested or looked into. <laughs> but it's just something to keep in mind. So if you get an item, like you get like an Alice pack, and you open it up, and the thing smells like puke. I'm sorry, that's just how it is. It's not because somebody puked in it. I mean, they could have, but. You most, never know. Most likely, it's just the waterproofing just going. Um, I would say, yeah, that that that's definitely. But yeah, for body armor, I would definitely say I'm not going to go in everything, but the body armor, I definitely say keys to it. Don't leave it up on a mannequin forever. Rotate it out. Um, Have it always standing up or lying down flat. Yeah, don't 
stack too much on top of each other. Hmm. Yeah, I I might break that rule. Body armor is really hard to store. Don't have it on hangers, in my opinion. Helmets and body armor are my biggest issues when it comes to yeah, because they storing. take up space. Helmets especially are the worst. Yeah, they don't really stack together. They, they really gotta... don't. They really shouldn't. But then again, it's like some people do. Yeah, and I would say hanging up body armor, I wouldn't suggest doing either because you're putting wear on the on the shoulder points. There's a lot of weight coming down on it over time. It's definitely going to start to. I guess I'm guilty of that too. Oh yeah, I'm 100. percent We're all guilty of some things we shouldn't be able to want to admit. But see, the thing is, is we're this is this is the point of this. We're learning from it. Yeah, and this is stuff that we've learned from other people or ourselves, um, and we're just passing it along. Again, none none of this is the right way per se. This is just kind of the potential way, like displaying. This is like our way of saying like we would suggest you to do it, but then people have their own ways, like collecting and preserving, yeah. and like oh, I'll do it my own way, you know, and that's fine. But just know what you're doing. Know what you're doing, first of all, yeah. Like know the baselines. Pretty know, much. Know yeah. where you're coming from. Just don't be like, oh, I know how to display it. Just take some guidance first and just yeah. listen to others and actually get opinions and Again, be open minded to Pretty what much. other people have to say. Yeah. yeah. It's key. Not everyone's an expert in all this until you've had a few years down on like on your belt pretty much. Even then, like generally speaking, most people just aren't you you're gonna have people that are going to know one thing better than others and and which but, happens yeah it and, happens but at the same point there might be a better way to do it than what they're doing yeah it so it it changes you know i mean it depends it changes the as time goes on really yeah and situational depending on the thing some things are just you, you, the best way is already known like how to preserve weather is pretty much kind of yeah a true it's been a thing for a while so i feel like that's just how you do it i'm not saying there's not a better way to do it there might be you, you never know but at the moment, I think that's just how it is. Uh, not that I'm an expert in that on any level. So going into environment, the last key thing, which we've talked about, environment is super key to all of this. Because even if you're doing all the right things, if you're leaving said military surplus item in the sun every day, 365, you're going to have one bleached item <laughs> after some time. Yep. And that's something that you have to keep. Like, I have my room blacked out. Like, basically no sunlight gets in here. And that's key um, yep. for anything. It doesn't matter if it's gas mask, if it's a piece of clothing. I mean, some things are going to obviously be more resistant than others. But, like, even clothing, it's going to eventually get sun bleached. Um, and you're you're not going to be happy when you have a piece that's, you know, A, who's going to want to buy it for me if you want to sell it? Yep. And, and B it loses its value, you know? Um, unless you're going for that sun bleach look. Some people do. Some people have a different way of, you know, collecting certain things. That's, that's called a buy a repro if you want it that way. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, no, environment's huge. Obviously, beyond the sun, we already talked about humidity, moisture. Moisture yeah. is huge. Moisture is a huge enemy. If you have metal parts, they're going to rust. Yep. Um, so you can always put preservatives on there. Um, there's a couple of different things you can use for that. Uh, but you want to keep an eye on that. You want to keep an eye on uh, certain types of painted surfaces. That's another thing too. Like, be careful what you're buying uh, when you're cleaning it and stuff. If you're buying something that's old that has lead paint on it, make sure you know you're buying something that has lead paint on yep. it. There's no problem buying it. Just make sure you're aware of what you're buying. Uh, the age-old asbestos in gas mask. Oh, boy. Like, we're not going to get into it right here because that's way too long of a thing in its own right. But just know what you're buying. Be careful, you know? It, like... I'm not saying anything in that regard. I'm just saying make sure you do what you're, you know what you're doing. Yeah. So um, when you go to clean or maintain said item, um, know the risks. And know that there might not be as big of a risk as there is. Actually, I'd probably say lead paint's more dangerous than the asbestos. Probably. Yeah. I, would, I would assume so. Um, but no, whatever. Uh, that's, a, that's a whole other thing. That's, that's a big one. <laughs> That might be a topic of itself. No. Oh, I don't know if I want to talk about that one. That one's, I, don't I don't even know, know. if I have the, the, the science for that one. But I would say that that's something to keep in mind. Um, I don't think there's environment, yeah, moisture, sunlight. Um, I don't know if there's not, there's not much more. Temperature? I yeah, guess. temperature, yeah. Hot and cold. Well, yeah, temperature's a good one, yeah. Because you have an item that has cold set, you know. Ne neoprene black rubber. Yeah, I wouldn't be leaving that in like a minus 40 degree freezer. You know, I wouldn't either. I mean, you can, and maybe well, what's that? What's that? 
what's good what's that good going to do for you, you i mean maybe, maybe it'll be fine i mean who knows i don't know i don't it depends on the item it, it some items if you have a pair of uh cold weather boots the mickey mouse type you could probably leave those any that, that you could probably leave those they're up for cold weather so yeah <laughs> but then again they're also meant to have a warm foot inside of it so yeah. what would the inside have you know it's not designed for that so those are things that keep in consideration and stuff um those are good boots by the way uh, they're not really? the mo- yeah they're not the most comfortable in terms of like they're kind of big and bulky but man they they're warm that's good to hear and they're pretty sealed so uh, mickey mouse boots i was surprised when i got them that, you know there's a reason why they're used from like the 50s all the way up until i want to say the 90s don't quote me on that but he's gonna quote me on it generally i'm gonna quote him on that <laughs> yeah he's definitely gonna quote it uh writing this down in the notes but yeah i would say that that's something to keep in mind and uh you know, I think that's pretty much it for environment. I mean, we already kind of, we touched upon it a little bit here and there. Yeah. You know, um, it's really just the, the obvious factors, moisture, sunlight, temperature. You know, those are the things you want to watch out for. Um, and I get, you know, don't, don't leave something in water, a running pond. <laughs> no, that's a, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Anything that's going to, yeah. Don't leave it up against... And an an environment also is don't leave it up against something that might damage it too. Yeah. Like, don't just leave your rare document on the table that you also eat. (laughs) Because eventually, bad things will happen. Accidents happen, people. I can tell from experience. Wait, what do you mean? I'm just kidding. Okay, good. I was going to say, I haven't destroyed anything recently. mm, I can actually tell from experience. That's mean. Anyways, moving on from... It was an accident, okay? Oh, is it you? Yeah, it was me by accident. Oh, wait, is this the... What? It doesn't matter. We'll leave that up for another conversation. What, what are you going to say? Feel like, I feel like you told me what you did. What did I do? I don't remember. That's was what... it Was it the magazine? Was it the magazine? I think it was my uh, German World War II magazine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I accidentally opened the... I already had it covered with like a plastic firm and a backboard yeah. of cardboard or whatever. I open it up and I try putting it back in, but the tape caught onto the back of it. And it, if I and it pulled it up, it it pulled off like a little bit of the writing and stuff like that. Like there's a good, there's a little tiny Ooh. chunk of it missing. So I'm like, man, what am I doing now? So there it's, you, it there is you have what it. it is. There you have it, folks. I ruined history by purpose. I'm sorry, boys and girls. No, no, but that's something. Yeah, accidents are gonna happen. You just gotta do as much as you can to mitigate such accidents from happening. I'm not even an expert. I wouldn't even consider myself an expert. I am still learning. I'm still an amateur in this field. I also would not consider him an expert. But I am also take not his, an Take his word for it. I'm also not an expert yet. So. We're all not going to be experts, if you think about it. That's true. There's always... It's still an area that is still going to be uncovered from day to day because every day there's always new documents or stuff being found out. There's also always new surplus coming out. Every day. Think about it. The stuff that is considered current issue now is eventually going to be meal syrup. Yep. So in 20 years, what I was issued, I mean, it already is considered meal syrup, but like it's going to be considered actually meal syrup. It's going to be like Molly's stuff is going to be common as as Alice's stuff yeah. is. I mean, Molly's stuff is common, but it'll be more common. Yeah, definitely. There's a ton of stuff out there. Uh, and there's a ton of guys that probably, was, I don't want to say steal, but kept some of their stuff. So I would say a- steal. I wouldn't say steal. I mean, there's other ways to do it. If you, like, say you want to keep uh, your rucksack, you just buy a beat-up rucksack and give them the beat-up. It's going to get turned into, it's going to get, uh, I don't I don't know, I forget the word for it, but they're not going to keep it. 86th? I wouldn't say 80. No, it wouldn't be 86. There's there's a word for it. I Someone's going to yell at me because I don't know what it is. But <laughs> basically, I turned in, I did that. That's how I kept my rucksack. I bought a rucksack. I gave him that one. I actually was using both because it was easier for having one at home to transport stuff to yep. the armory. And I ended up just giving them that one. It was a little more beat up. And mine actually had my name. We were required to put our name tapes on our rucks. So I was like, well, this is easier than taking my name tape off the ruck, this one. So I just kept that one. So that's what I ended up doing. So now I have the ruck I used for five years. Kind of cool. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. And it's not that big of a deal. Um, and like I said, they got they got a ruck out of it. So it's not like... But that happens a lot. Guys do that a lot and stuff. Yeah. As long they don't care, as long as they get what is on the docket on the on the the on your um oh wow I can't think of what it's called your 
the oh man. Well, anyways, as long as it's on the list, they don't care. <laughs> I can't think. Of, there's a name for it, and it's been it's been a couple. Of, it's been two years almost now for me. So since getting out. But with that being said, I think we've covered everything. I would like to add on to the um, better ways to display. Yeah. So for displaying purposes, um, you can do enclosed or open display areas such as, you know, Ikea shelving and whatnot. That's open area, open area. There's nothing wrong with that. Just be cautious with the dust, um, the sunlight, the temperature, whatnot. Or um, you can also purchase a glass display case. Yeah, like a curio case or something. Yeah, pretty much like that. Yeah. That's also somewhat sealed, but better preserved in a way because, um, okay, I'm I'm at a loss of words right now. But it's it's much better no, to get, it's much better to maintain that because you don't have to worry about dusting that often. Not only that, it's enclosed because right now I actually bought a a cedar. I believe a cedar or something like that, or oak display case a while back, like last month or something. And that's where I keep all my World War One stuff because it just it looks better and it actually preserves that stuff way better than what it would be originally be. Pretty yeah, much. just out in the open anywhere and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is also, by the way, he did this is on Instagram, right? Yes, it's on my one of my Instagram posts. Yeah, you can check that out. It's it's a pretty good case. And and again, that that goes into this whole. I love when you're about to sign out and you just brought up a good point. Um, this brings up a good point. Just like collecting, how you display, as long as it's done within reason, how you display is is how you want to display. So you can do like the Dragon Man where you have this giant warehouse and it just goes on climate forever. Climate controlled. Yeah, it's climate controlled and he has everything. You know, you could be like Bailey and have enclosed things that are more akin to, say, a museum like setting. You can do what I do where, like you said, Ikea furniture where it's just laid out in front of you and stuff. Um, I will say if you use enclosed, if you have the space for it, you do get the advantage of dust control. Not only that, the only downside with um, enclosed casings and stuff like that is the price and the size of them. Yes. They tend to be a lot more expensive depending on which ones you get. You can, like, you can just get entirely glass and metal or just wood with certain light fixtures inside of it, and that'll cost you at least a couple hundred or even like a thousand depending on how, how big you get it. Yeah, and, and the good thing though with that is once again, the like the last topic, it applies to that. eBay, Facebook Marketplace yep. is an amazing resource for finding storage per, uh, storage items. Yep. That is the way to go if you're looking. I mean, random life advice for me. If you're looking to buy anything for your house and like an entertainment center, Facebook Marketplace, you'll be able to find one for 10 bucks. I got a nice one for 10 bucks. I had to clean it up, do a little work on it. Works great. And uh, that's definitely, you know, you don't have to buy everything brand new reuse you know reuse stuff as much as you can it's better for the environment it's a better way to go and that is definitely something to uh, keep an eye out for you know when you're when you're collecting also i mean if you're living in your parents house and you don't have enough room or your parents won't let you do it i mean you're kind of stuck i mean unfortunately you have to make sacrifices but once you get into your own place you know finding the storage that works for you or the uh, display to the shelving unit or whatever it is curio cabins uh Again, IKEA furniture, something off Facebook Marketplace. Definitely go with it. Because... Bookcases, hell, they're, they're the oh, yeah. cheapest options out there. Bookcases are great, especially if you're doing smaller items and you're going to display it. Yeah. Um, and again, this this applies to more than mill syrup. Uh, my girlfriend collects uh, a lot of different things, including dolls and um, like old porcelain dolls, and uh, she has this. Um, this decent sized collection and she has a curio cabin downstairs and that's where she stores everything. It's got a light built into it. So if she wants to really show it off, that's the way to do it. Um, it's nice and closed in. You don't have to worry about things falling out of it and stuff. And that's the other advantage to a closing uh, space. You don't have to worry about things rolling out of it. Yeah. Like that is something that I've had to deal with. Um, for the most part, I have my things set up so that that won't happen, but if you bump into it, it can fall off. Yep. And if it hits the wrong, you know, if it falls, hits the wrong angle. Uh, now you have a broken piece of something. Or you have a cat intentionally knocking down the stuff. Yep. Oh, and that actually, you know what? That brings up a really Ooh, good- should have mentioned this. Pets. Environment. Pets. Yeah. So- How can we forget about this? Yeah, this is pets, a- Well, because yeah. I don't really have- I have a rabbit. I have two dogs. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have, I have a rabbit and my rabbit is has its own space and- Yeah. You know, its own half a room, basically. 
or a quarter of a room. And uh, that's where he stays. And <laughs> I don't, my collection is separated from him for obvious reasons. Rabbits love to Good chew. Good reasons. Yeah, rabbits love to chew on things. And uh, But yeah, pets. If you have pets, that's something huge to take in consideration. Can your pets get to your items? Can your pets rub up against your items with their fur? Can they lick it? Can they sniff it? You know? Yeah, yeah. saliva from their pet. That's yep. huge. So yeah, that's a huge environment. I don't, I'm surprised we forgot that. I'm glad we actually did remember it because it, you got in the episode and here you go. Um, that's huge. I think that's something that people often overlook. You know, it's the old meme of, you know, comes from a pet free home and then the cat's in the background of the photo. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, that's another thing too. Smoking. Oh yeah. Smoke free. There you go. Yeah, man, we should have kept this. This would have been good for the eBay episode too. When you're buying. I know. Yeah. Well, now you're hearing it here. Uh, so well, it's better this way because we're talking about the environment and yeah. preservation. So it's like. A win-win for us, pretty much. So yeah, that's another thing. Smoking. If you smoke, um, make sure to do it away from your collection, so you don't, you know, haphazardly burn anything. You like that. really shouldn't smoke in your house to start from. Just from or your car. <laughs> well, yeah, you shouldn't really smoke in an enclosed space, just because the it does stain. Um, you can smoke. It yellows stuff as well. Yeah, and that yeah, yellowing is huge. I have a C4, a Canadian C4 gas mask, not the one that's displayed on Instagram, but another one, and it is completely smoke damaged to the point where I cannot clean it to get rid of it. It's also uh, the inner, uh, the oral nasal cup is completely tinged yellow. So yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, but it is what it is. I didn't say it came from a f- smoke free home. So that's my mistake. I remember buying a, uh, M40 up in New Hampshire cause my mom drove me, forget it. I don't know. I'm spoiled. But anyways, I drove up and I got it for like 40 bucks. I found out when I got home that it just reeked of smoke, the carrier, the inside of the mask, just awful. Yeah. Just awful smell. Just reeked of smoke. I just couldn't couldn't get this, you know, this the smell out. Buyer beware. Yeah. So I eventually sold it, and the guy was happy with it, which it's a win win for me. But then again, it's just like I don't like smelling that because I just don't like secondhand smoke to begin with. Exactly, and that's completely fair, and that's something to keep in mind. And like I said, I wish we would have kind of included that in eBay, but it's good here too. So yeah, when it comes to environment, if you do smoke, hey, I don't, I really don't care. That's your own personal choice. But if you do smoke, yeah, try to do it away from your stuff. If you're trying to preserve your stuff, that's definitely key. Again, pets, try to keep your pets away from it. Again, if you can't, you can't. I'm not going to say don't collect because you have pets because I love pets. My sister has four dogs and I love her four dogs. And uh, we would probably have dogs if I lived in a bigger space. I definitely would have dogs and probably cats and maybe some other animals. We, you know, uh, but for the time being, you know, that's something to c- definitely take in consideration. I think we miss a major topic as well. What's that? Um, please enlighten me general cleaning with rubber mask that i feel like is a separate that's a whole separate that's probably a video topic honestly yeah it could be but then again we can probably briefly cover it i would say the the brief overview if you want to go over it so with world war one and interwar mask it's not ideal to you could just dust them and like probably wipe down the lenses and whatnot that are not you know cloth covered but most of the lenses are glass and it's much easier to like dust it or like clean the inside and whatnot with a you know soft cloth or just water itself but when it comes down to world war ii especially u.s mask up until now it's just mostly butyl rubber or natural like rubber natural rubber silicone neoprene as well. yeah neoprene yep and you can just use a washcloth just just be cautious with Honestly, the tape and stuff like that. Just yeah. not to get too wet. World War II, they got tape and the wire job that's done around yep. the hose. And up until around Vietnam, when they started doing air crew tanker masks, they still yep. have the tape and stuff like that. And just be careful where you're cleaning around the microphone jacks and whatnot. Yep, that's true too. If it works, don't put water into it. And also drying. Uh, make sure that's actually key to the to just storage and display. If you wash something. Make sure you properly dry it. And don't just throw it up in storage. Yeah, no, you gotta let it dry, air dry for. I've yeah. heard up to six hours sometimes, depending what mask it is. Like, yeah, like let it just air dry. I don't care if it's you know slightly wet or not. You just let yeah, it put it, air, put it, it on let a it towel. Air dry for a day. Yeah, put it on a towel. Don't use heat. No. Generally speaking, you don't want to use heat. Um, there's probably some items that you probably could. Well, well clothing, and, and yeah, we'll probably actually honestly. I didn't even think about it. There's, there's a whole conversation right there about taking care of clothing and when to wash clothing and, and all that stuff. But, yeah, that's because there's instructions on there. But then again, it's like, do you want to or not? Yeah, because it's going to have fading and stuff. Yeah. And, 
It's um, plus with the detergents today we, today we use, like the chemicals and whatnot. Yeah, it's way I'm different. I'm not sure if it would, you know, potentially harm it or not. You definitely want to use like the sensitive skin. Like, le- yeah, or like, probably. Or like a seventh generation all natural or just style. don't use it. Just clean it with like yeah, hand, basic stuff. Like yeah. hand spotting, whatever. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we're not, we're, I guess we won't go deep diving into that because we're getting a little long here. But um, that is something else to take consideration. If you're doing, if you're washing anything, be careful what you're using to wash it with. If it's something like really chemically strong, like don't go around bleaching things. Bleach is a really honestly a you really be, really bad thing. You shouldn't be using bleach anyways. It's a no. caustic agent. Um, in the paint the, paint thinners and stuff like that. Yeah, no, that's a big no. I mean, sometimes you might have to use acetone. It depends. Yeah, but I would say yeah for bleach definitely no. I, I'm a custodian and I can tell you that bleach is basically kind of being ran out of the market. So it's just not used anymore. It's not good. Um, so yeah, with that, I think we covered almost everything. And uh, I mean, we again, we'll probably do a future. I think we'll do a future follow up on this, talking about it more because there's definitely more. We can, obviously, we kept going here. There's so a lot more we can. There's a lot here. more. We just wanted to get a, as much as we could into one. Uh, we will be doing more. So um, with that, thanks for coming on again, Bailey. Thank you again. And I will be signing off. So have a good day. <laughs>